Looking around the NFL, it feels weird with the lack of quarterback competitions going around the league. It seems like most teams are just set with their guys. Even in San Francisco, it seems that all signs are pointing to Trey Lance. So the main story going into the season is going to be focused on the only team that drafted a quarterback in the first round, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, a lot of people might not even see this as a quarterback competition, so I threw out a poll on my community tab to ask this question. In the 4,000 votes, it was very close. But in the comments, they were overwhelmingly more reasons why Mitchell Trubisky should start, and a lot of the reasons gave me deja vu to just last year when the New England Patriots had Mac Jones and Cam Newton, and the exact same reasons were being said. Cam is a veteran, let Mac sit a year. Cam didn't have the roster he will this year. He had COVID. Let's give him one more chance. Well, hindsight tells us that those people, including myself, who bought into that idea were wrong. So I'm not gonna let that happen this time around. I definitely think that there's a nuanced discussion that needs to be had here, and we just can't accept what makes sense on paper. There are also a lot of comments that said, whoever does best in minicamp in preseason, and that statement I totally agree with. So that's the question we're gonna be looking to answer in today's video. With a historically dominant team with a really good roster, a Hall of fame coach in a loaded division that's looking to put out the best players right now, who should be the captain of the ship in 2022? Kenny Pickett or Mitchell Trubisky? There's obviously a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. And I think this is going to be a difficult topic to break down for a couple of reasons. First off, we have a rookie quarterback in this discussion that we haven't seen take a single snap in the NFL, but we also haven't seen Trubisky play since the 2020 season with the Chicago Bears, as he was obviously Josh Allen backup in Buffalo last year. So we are going to work with the film that we have and diagnose their play in a vacuum which hopefully will take out a lot of extraneous variables like college level competition and poor offensive line play. Let's start out with Kenny Pickett. To me, Kenny Pickett was far and away the best quarterback in this draft class. I think the first quarterback falling to 20 isn't as rare as you might think, but it is rare when a guy like Kenny Pickett is in the mix. Maybe one of the biggest question marks is sample size. Even though we got to see him play for five seasons, his last one was the only not average one. But not only was it not average, it was remarkable. So when this happens, we have to look for reasons why. We can see that he had a very good offensive line, the best receiver in college football, and he played in the ACC conference that wasn't nearly as dominant as it has been in years past. But we also have an example in Joe Burrow, who had a very similar arc of his college career. But let's look at his college team. He had a top offensive line, Clyde edwards alaire Justin Jefferson, and Jamar Chase. We have to look at their play in a vacuum. And when I see Kenny Pickett to every year prior to this year, there was a drastic improvement in his throwing mechanics, which improved his ball placement, but there was also a massive improvement in his consistent decision making, which combined with his improved mechanics, all were reflected in his 67.2% completion percentage, which was improvement from just the year prior in his junior year when he was through for just 61%. But let's take a look at some of his film to show his best qualities and then some things we would like to see him improve on. When doing a film analysis on Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Trubisky, I want to be clear, we're only going to look at things that are either specific to them or that really differentiates one from the other. And the first thing we're going to look at with Kenny Pickett that was a huge improvement was his mechanical issues that he fixed, which allowed him to have a much higher completion percentage. And this is really important because when everything is perfect, like right here, he has a really good pocket. It's everything. He has a really nice base. He has a much cleaner, much sharper release. His shoulder pad level stays about the same. And this allows him to take advantage on plays like this when everything's perfect the offensive line holds up the receivers open downfield and these are plays that he wasn't hitting as consistently he was in his first couple years really good pocket presence not freaking out and although these aren't the most impressive balls when your game is predicated on drag routes checkdowns, and then hitting the deep ball you really want to be accurate and he was so much more consistent and I think this has a lot to do with his ability to be more consistent in his mechanics and this really allowed him to have a step that's come to the next level when everything was being taken advantage of when he was able to capitalize and even when everything's perfect being able to have accuracy on back shoulder throws like this. 
And Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Trubisky both can be very accurate, but the mechanical advantages I give to Kenny Pickett now is Abel's allowed him to do this more consistently. And now the next thing, when you say he doesn't have the arm talent, if you can be accurate, this is how you combat this. When you have a later in stage Drew Brees or Peyton Manning in their career, when they don't have the biggest arm, this isn't going to be a Justin Herbert 60 yard bomb or a 40 yard dig route across the field, but you can combat this with elite ball placement. When you have the green light, when the DB's turned around to put it in the only spot where your receiver and only receiver can go and get it is where Kenny Pickett was really able to shine. And so if people want to say his ceiling is only so high because of his arm talent, I would like to disagree because when you have a guy like this, it's all about going to be ball placement and what goes on between the ears. How fast can you process defenses? Can you have eye man manipulation to look off the safety? And this is where Kenny Pickett tested off the charts that makes me think he can be an elite quarterback in the NFL. And that's great and all, but the NFL level, we know that not everything is going to be perfect and more times than not, it's just not going to be. Your feet aren't always going to be in the perfect situation. Your receiver isn't going to win the route. And we see it on a play like this where they're going to do a double slant, but what Kenny Pickett really wants to do is these slants are going to clear out for the flats. And when you know you have a good quarterback with solid mechanics, you can follow the footwork. And on this play, we see he wants to hit the flats because that was his footwork is telling us he's opening it up to throw it. But mid play, he sees this first slant across the middle of the field start to open up and his feet aren't set for it, but he knows he needs to throw it now. So he's going to be able to throw it open face, this three quarter release, little flick. And this is the Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow throw that we love to see across the middle of the field, still able to be on time, able to be accurate and convert in the red zone with great decision decision making and when everything's not perfect it's still okay and this is really when you can have a guy that maybe doesn't have elite traits but he can become an elite quarterback so the first play is not there because it gets broken up the defense dials up a really nice blitz he's able to get escape the pocket so yes he has good arm strength good mobility but right here he starts attacking the line of scrimmage makes the defender choose but i love this you see the referee at the top of your screen where the sticks are he's going to start to flatten this out he sees the sticks he's going to flatten out makes the defender choose and this is where you can have not elite traits but still be an elite quarterback and consistently make these plays for your team. And this to me is why he was far and above away better than any other quarterback in this draft class. He showed all these traits to convert when everything was perfect and when everything wasn't perfect, he was still able to. Like a play like this, he looks off the safety to the right. He knows he wants to go. He has a guy right in his face, still able to be accurate on the outside. He's able to extend the plays, being able, if you don't have the perfect mechanics, have the foundation of it, have a good base, and it allows you to make these crossbody throws across in tight windows in the red zone or against Clemson when you're rolling out to the right you have a guy in your face you're leaning fading away it's this level of accuracy that really impressed me and just being able to be able to get mobile has the frame him and Mitchell Trubisky have a very similar frame being able to have a strong base and shed these tackles and if he's able to do all this at the NFL level I think he can thrive with what the Steelers have on the offensive side of the ball now, let's talk about the first ever MVP, Mitch Trubisky. And a lot of people want to say that he was a victim of circumstances. When he had a good team, he was a pro bowler, and he was a double doink away from being a playoff winning quarterback, and he had to deal with Matt Nagy. And those people would be absolutely correct. Mitchell Trubisky is a good quarterback and much better than people give him credit for in his last few seasons in Chicago. So it's evident here that we are dealing with two good quarterbacks quarterbacks but he is also far from flawless. But I think along with Nagy and a bad offensive line, this kind of brought out and exposed some bad habits that he already had. And some plays and games that were decided by Trubisky air that he doesn't have any excuse for. But let me show you what I mean. Let's quickly look at some of the best and worst of Mitchell Trubisky. Now where Kenny Pickett made his living doing drag routes, check downs, long throws down the field, whether it's go balls, deep posts, back shoulder fades, where Mitchell Trubisky has the huge advantage over Kenny Pickett is on plays like this. NFL throws eight to 15 yards down the field between linebackers, between safeties, being able to rip it down the middle of the field with accuracy. This is an NFL throw right here. And probably the biggest difference between Saturdays and Sundays, the windows get much tighter as well as the window for air. And this is where Mitchell Trubisky Trubisky throughout his young career has really been able to shine with these types of throws with the arm talent he possesses. 
And this is something Kenny Pickett's really going to either need to learn or work on, whether he didn't need to do it at the college level. But this is a third and five. This is going to be a staple in the NFL. When nothing's really there, you have a good line. You have to make it open with your throw, and it doesn't get much better than this. And Mitchell Trubisky could put some really nice games together where he made several throws like this right in a row, whereas as Kenny Pickett, we only saw a couple throws like this throughout his entire season. And this also comes into play in the red zone when the windows get even tighter. It's probably the best simulation you could get in college, but Mitchell Trubisky being able to fit in, fit into tight windows like he does here. And even though neither of them, I would say, have elite arm talent, Mitchell Trubisky definitely has better off his back foot. This is probably 60 yards down the field. Definitely advantage Mitchell Trubisky when it talks about how far he can throw it down the field and how fast he can throw it over the middle into these tight windows. And you're going to have to take some shots like this where everything might have been a lot more clear. When it's not as clear, you have to be able to trust your guys. This is at the end of the Saint games. This is kind of a nothing touchdown. But Mitchell Trubisky being able to trust his guys when you have a Hall of Famer like Jimmy Graham, Trust him to go up with it. And now to get in some of the things that worry me about Mitchell Trubisky, it's accuracy and decision making. And we're going to start out with the first one with accuracy with Kenny Pickett when we saw everything was good. The offensive line was good. The wide receiver was wide open. His mechanics were darn near perfect. But right here, everything's perfect for Mitchell Trubisky. But watch his feet. Look how wide he opens up. Look how he still does this three quarter release. And if you're just following the feet here and you would have to guess where he missed this ball, if you guessed wide left, you would be absolutely correct. You cannot miss when everything is perfect. And this happened way too much in Chicago. When you have a guy wide open deep, you can't underthrow him. On a corner route, everything's perfect. You cannot underthrow him. And it was just these blatant accuracy issues that you can't blame Nagy. You can't blame the offensive line. You can't blame anyone really here besides Mitchell Trubisky. These are mechanical accuracy issues that we saw all too much in Chicago and was a big part of the reason why they were looking for a quarterback that could capitalize on these really wide open, easy balls that you have to complete at the end. NFL level. But probably more concerning than the accuracy issues were just the flat out decisions he was making. He picked up these really bad habits of staring down his receivers, making it all too easy for the defense to convert on his mistakes. And this often led him throwing it to double triple coverage or being able to defense being able to jump the routes just because he's staring him down and when it happened was so important you cannot make these throws in the red zone you cannot make these mistakes throwing into double triple coverage because that's points taken off the board and this is what single-handedly will lose you games and so even at a young level i think the eye manipulation that kenny pickett possesses is already superior to what we at least saw in chicago again we don't know what to expect after seeing mitchell trubisky in buffalo and this is where it really doesn't start to matter if you can rip it over the middle of the field with really good arm talent into these tight windows because if you decide to make a decision like this you could make five or six throws in the same drive that are uber impressive but if you're staring down your guy down the middle of the field and you decide to throw into double coverage and it gets picked off all of that is for naught. Now, let's try and make some sort of conclusion. And I'll caveat this is there are still a lot of unknowns. What improvements or struggles does Kenny Pickett go through being in an NFL system? What did Mitch learn from Josh Allen and Brian Dable? These are obviously things I can't tell you from my home in Florida. These are things we won't know till we hear more reports or we see for our own eyes come August in the preseason games. But with my knowledge and what we have available to us right now, they are actually similar in a lot of ways as we saw in the film. They almost have an identical frame. They both have good but not elite arm talent. They're both mobile but not in the design quarterback run sense. But I do think as this current date, Mitchell Trubisky is QB1, but he's on a short leash. From what I've seen, my guess is his leash is gonna run out within the first few weeks of the season, but more likely, and what I'm gonna predict, is that the Steelers are actually gonna trot out Kenny Pickett starting week one. Let me explain why. They are very similar, but with the Steelers offense, with Najee Harris apparently gaining 15 pounds of muscle, an improved offensive line this offseason, really, really good and deep wide receiver core, and a great tight end. I think their peaks are so 
so high and their defense is so good and they need someone who isn't gonna lose the games for them as one mistake in this division and the AFC in general is gonna be the difference between a playoff berth or not and when looking at rookie mistakes or just bad habits in general I think Kenny Pickett not only has the potential to be better with time but even in the short term I think he has better eye manipulation already better consistent accuracy and decision making and even with his teeny tiny itty bitty little baby hands that everyone raves about he doesn't have a fumbling problem seeing a first round pick of the quarterback of the future doesn't make all that much sense as they could have gotten in another direction to help Mitch out even more but I think they did their due diligence to get a guy that they'll have more success with and personally I think they got it right and to bring a poker term into this the Steelers aren't pot committed when it comes to paying Trubisky Trubisky is realistically making really good backup quarterback money but not even close to real NFL starting money with his two-year $14 million contract and I don't think this is any some sort of bold proclamation they got a quarterback who's the most NFL ready and ready to play right now and my guess is he'll be the most attractive option come week one but in this video I hope to shed some light on the real life film examples or why we could lead to this conclusion and when you go talk to your friends about who the quarterback controversy is and this is being the only one you can have a really good sense of why the Steelers might go in the direction they do and you guys are more than welcome to hold me accountable for this statement but we might have to revisit things once we start to smell the fresh air when September rolls around and we get to see them both take the field in their new colors but that is where we're at today. And that's only what I think. You guys have to let me know what you guys think. Make sure to like this video if you like videos like these. Make sure to comment down below what you think and who you think the Steelers should go with and what you think will happen as the season goes on. Make sure to subscribe if you guys enjoy daily sports content. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace!